What I'm about to show you appears to violate the laws of acoustics that we've known about for thousands of years. Check it out. So as totally underwhelming as that was, I just showed you a physical manifestation of the undertone series, which up until recently was thought not to exist in the real world. So with that in mind, I welcome you to the wonderful world of subharmonic music and anomalous low frequency vibration. You really gotta check out some of this stuff. In 1994, violinist Mira Kimura gave a solo recital in New York City that completely stunned everybody in the audience. It's Mari Kimura, not Mira Kimura. I learned her name wrong as I was preparing this video. I am a complete idiot. Not just because of her stunning virtuosity, but because of her ability to create notes that shouldn't exist, at least by any known laws of acoustics. Dazzling the audience with her subharmonic technique, Kimura introduced the world to what scientists have dubbed anomalous low frequency vibration, or ALF. ALF is created by very forcefully drawing the bow across the strings so that a pitch lower than the one being fingered is heard. It sounds like this. Lowering the pitch electronically isn't a problem, but to alter it like this acoustically is very strange. It's as if you could alter your speaking voice to talk an octave lower without resorting to cheap studio effects. In order to understand why this happens, let's talk about what scientists originally thought Mira Kimura was doing with her subharmonic technique. Let's talk about the undertone series. Whenever you play a musical note, you hear the note fundamental, which is the lowest physically possible frequency at which that note can vibrate. Whenever you play an A on a violin, the fundamental is an A. Duh. The overtone series is based upon simple multiples of that fundamental frequency. Pitches played on musical instruments generate multiple overtones with varying degrees of amplitude. The combination of all these overtones together gives musical instruments their unique color. So you might hear that violin playing the note A and perceive the fundamental pitch of A, but you will also subtly hear all of the overtones, which contain many different pitches. These overtones are based upon multiples. Multiply the fundamental pitch by two and you get an octave. By three and you get an octave plus a perfect fifth. By four and you get two octaves. By five, you get two octaves plus a major third, etc., etc., on into essentially infinity. What if you divided the fundamental pitch? Well, then we would get the undertone series. If you divided the fundamental by two, you get an octave lower. If you divided by three, you get an octave plus a perfect fifth, etc., etc. It's a mirror of the overtone series. This is an interesting musical concept, and it was explored in depth by Henry Cowell in his book New Musical Resources, and also the composer Harry Parch, but for centuries, this was not thought to be physically possible. This is because notes would have to vibrate somehow at notes lower than the fundamental, which remember is the lowest physical point of vibration. It should be impossible, right? Well, not necessarily. You can laugh in the face of Pythagoras with nothing more than a tuning fork and some kind of piece of paper. When you hit a tuning fork against a surface, it produces a really strong sine wave fundamental. It's kind of quiet, so here we go. When you touch a tuning fork to a piece of paper, it will vibrate at the same frequency of that tuning fork. The vibrations of the tuning fork hit the piece of paper at the same speed of that frequency. However, sometimes the tuning fork will rebound off the piece of paper in such a way that it only hits the piece of paper after every second vibration, or third vibration, or fourth vibration. This produces the undertone series. This is the thing that people thought was not physically possible, and we were able to do that in a very, very simple way. So it's for this reason that most people originally thought that Mira Kimura was exploring the untapped potentials of the Undertone series for the very first time after hundreds of years of speculation. But no, it wouldn't be that simple, would it? The big problem here is that the notes that she's able to generate using her subharmonic technique just don't fit within the theoretical framework of the Undertone series at all. The notes that come out are kind of, well, they seem random. There's no framework for which notes she can generate which makes the thing very puzzling from a scientific perspective. When you pluck a string, like on a guitar, the string vibrates back and forth based upon its fundamental frequency. The science behind bowed stringed instruments is a little bit more complicated. When you move a bow across a string, the string sticks to the rough surface of the bow and gets dragged along in the direction of the bow movement. This dragging motion creates a tiny kink which travels the length of the string towards the bow. When the kink reaches the bow, the string is released and rebounds in the opposite direction, only for the whole process to start up again. This is called the 
Hemholtz motion. When you apply too much pressure to the bow, the string gets pulled along further than it should, and then the kink doesn't release the bow into a steady vibration afterwards. This produces a very unpleasant sound. The scientific term for this is ruckus motion, but you may recognize it as the sound of a beginning violin player learning how to play. For whatever reason, there exists a sweet spot in this ruckus motion where a new tone emerges lower than the fundamental pitch of the string. Like I said though, the rules governing which sort of pitch emerges and why aren't exactly clear. The long and short of it is that nobody truly understands why it happens, it's just that it happens. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor and they aren't able to figure out what's wrong with you so they call it idiopathic. Nobody actually knows, but we need a fancy term to pretend like we do. Anomalous low frequency vibration. Some of these notes don't really exist in the truest sense. For whatever reason, they're missing their fundamental frequency, and we hear the related overtones to an implied fundamental. Because we're so used to hearing the related overtones to a particular fundamental, our brains have the ability to reconstruct that fundamental just based upon the overtones, even if the fundamental actually isn't there. Let's do an experiment, shall we? I have here the fundamental pitch of C, which hits at around 256 hertz, and you can see that here in the spectral analyzer. Now the interesting thing is, is if I play with the upper harmonics, I have the 10th harmonic here, which is a major third. I have the 11th harmonic here, which is kind of like a sharp 11, a little out of tune. The perfect fifth, the 12th harmonic, and kind of like a weirdly out of tune flat six. And now here's the weird thing, is if I play all four of these upper harmonics together, none of which is the root C, You can hear that fundamental C, even though it doesn't exist. And nowhere here in the spectral analyzer can you see that 256 hertz. Your brain just recreates it in your head because it's so used to hearing this combination of upper harmonics and then filling in that fundamental. There's a lot of interesting scientific research on how this happens. The links are in the description. But what's fascinating is that all of us can reconstruct the fundamental as well as others. So for some people, you can't actually hear the anomalous low frequency vibration. It's almost like being colorblind to it. Might not be the best analogy, but I find it interesting anyway. And I find this whole anomalous low frequency thing so fascinating because nowadays most of the interesting innovation in music is occurring in the electronic realm and creating new and interesting textures with technology. This is great, of course, but there's things like anomalous low frequency vibration which show that there are many interesting and fantastic things left to do by manipulating sounds in the physical real world. There are new techniques yet to be explored, new instruments to design, and new theories of music to be developed. Explanations for everything abound in the internet age, but when you come across something mysterious and genuinely new with no satisfactory scientific explanation yet, it's a really exciting feeling. It's nice to know that there's a lot of things yet to discover. Anyway, this has been Adam Neely. I have another video coming out every Monday, so please comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Thanks again for sticking around till the end. Uh, this is where you get to hear the background music at full volume. If you want to listen to the rest of the background music, it's from my band Sungazer. You can check it out at sungazermusic.bandcamp.com. And uh, I apologize again for mispronouncing Mari Kimura's name so many times. I, I don't even know if that's officially how you pronounce it, but then again, that follows how Mari is actually spelled. So, God, I'm such an idiot. All right, well, thanks for watching again, and please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.